configuring the EGX350 for scribing. On the handy panel, want to press the menu key until you see the home view Z1, Z0, Z2 menu. Move the cursor to view and press enter. Once the machine stops, we want to go ahead and open the cover and we want to install the supplied AS10 sheet to the lower left corner of the engraving table. Next, we will go ahead and place our metal plate to the lower left corner of the engraving table on top of the AS10 sheet. At this point, we'll close the cover and move the cursor to the home position and press the enter key. The spindle will move to the lower left corner of the machine. At this point, press the menu key until you see the XYZ and spindle speed menu. Again, we'll open the cover and using the Z minus key, we want to lower the spindle until it is just above the lower left corner of our material, approximately an eighth inch to a quarter inch. Then using the arrow keys we want to move the spindle over the corner of the material. The center of the nose cone should be over the lower left corner of the material. Press XY origin set and press the enter key to place the brackets around the value. This sets your home position. Again press the menu key until you see the I.O. Others Adjustment menu. We want to arrow over to Others and hit Enter. For Revolution, we want to move the cursor to Off and press Enter. Press the Menu key to Auto Z Control. Move the cursor to On and press Enter. The display will read Set Lock Lever to Position 1 or 2. On the right side of the spindle, we want to press the button in and down to set the lever to 1. This will float the spindle freely. We want to go ahead and press the menu key multiple times until you get back to the XYZ spindle speed menu. This we refer to as the default menu. Now using the arrow keys, we want to move the nose cone above the material to a flat area away from the corner. At this point, we are going to prepare our optional Diamond Scribe tool. Using our supplied hex wrench, we want to loosen the nut on the brass knob and we will insert the optional Diamond Scribe tool from the top until it touches the material. Then we will go ahead and tighten the screw on the brass cutter knob. To verify our configuration, we want to press the Z plus key to raise the tool. Then we will press the Z minus key and continue holding it until we see the asterisk next to the Z auto. This indicates that the machine found the surface. Go ahead and press the Z plus to clear the material. At this point, we can close the cover and press the menu key until you see the home view Z1, Z0, Z2 menu. With the cursor on home, press the enter key. Now we're ready to engrave. Once the EGX350 has been configured for diamond scribing, we will now configure Roland Engrave Studio to engrave. 
For this project, we will scribe an 80 by 80 millimeter metal plate. So what we'll do is go ahead and launch Roland Engrave Studio. Once we have Engrave Studio launched, we need to click on Machines and ensure that the EGX350 is selected. We can then click on Create a new file. First thing we want to do is set our units. We'll go ahead and set these to millimeters. Ensure that plate is selected. Input 80 for the width, 80 for the height. And for the material thickness, set it for 2 millimeters. For the XY origin position, we want to set it for the lower left hand corner. You want to ensure that use origin offset is unchecked. Then go ahead and click OK. You want to go ahead and click File and Import. We're going to import an Adobe Illustrator file. We can also import EPSs as well. Once we import the file, we can select it. And under the Align Vectors, we can select Center in Material. We can go ahead and resize the graphic. And if you hold the Shift key down, it'll keep it proportional to our screen. We can add in text if we want as well. Now once we have the file set up and centered, now we can add our toolpath to the graphic. We want to go ahead and sweep select the graphic to have it selected. Then click on the toolpath tab. And to thumbnail it, you can click on the little thumb tag here to pin it to our screen. In the toolpaths window, we want to go to setup materials and set the rapid clearance gap as well as the Z home position to 6 millimeters. And click OK. We will then click on the quick engraving toolpaths. Under tool, we want to click on select. For this job, we are using the diamond eighth inch. 120 degree engraving tool. For the line width, we want to ensure that the line width is 0 0.005 and that the step over is 0 0.0025. Under the feeds and speeds, we can click the drop down and select millimeters per second. We can set the feed rate to between 40 and 50 millimeters per second. For the plunge rate, we can set this to the maximum value of 30. Click Apply and click OK. For the depth and pressure, we can specify 1 millimeter. Even though the machine is set for Auto Z control, the software itself must have a value associated uh, to the depth in order to be able to generate the actual toolpath for the file. Now, for this particular job, we're going to do a fill, and we're going to do a hatch fill, and I'm going to set the fill angle for 135 degrees. You can actually play with this setting to get something that you really like, but 135 seems to work pretty well. We can give the toolpath a name. We can call it fill, for instance. This is very useful, especially if you're using multiple toolpaths. We'll go ahead and click Calculate. To calculate the toolpath, and if we zoom in on it, you can actually see the toolpath itself. Once completed, we can go ahead and click Output Toolpath to output the file to the engraver.
Please see Chapter 3 of 4 for configuration of the EGX350 for nose cone engraving.